you are specialized in making corsets and yeah um corsets are something very specialized not only because well not everyone wears corsets nowadays and learning how to make corsets is also something that is like it, it's it's pretty intense so did you know that you wanted to specialize in corsets or was that something that just naturally developed to, as you kind of like went through your career? Uh, it kind of naturally de de developed where I, mm -hmm. I'd like to do a lot of dressing up as well mm -hmm. as a teenager. And uh, I always had a fascination for corsets and mm -hmm. watching um, like costume dramas with my mother. Uh, and with my grandmother as well, mm -hmm. um, I was just always enthralled by uh, mm -hmm. these these corsets that everyone was uh, mentioning to be torturous and horrible to wear and painful. And um, uh, I was just intrigued by it. I don't know uh, mm -hmm. exactly how to explain it, uh, but just something that uh, forms a foundation of your garment. I mean, it, it completely... Um, uh, it, it, it defines the way the rest of the clothes fit, uh, fit your body and mm -hmm. uh, it's such a foundation garment as well that um, I was just very interested in how to make it uh, so mm -hmm. it would fit well and mm -hmm. uh, after buying one I mean I, I saved money for ages to buy one mm -hmm. off the rail <laughs> put it on and I thought yeah they're not lying it, it hurts it's mm -hmm. horrible to wear it's uh, it's not comfortable at all. Like, um, and uh, but I decided that that is because it is not made for me. It is such mm -hmm. a close fitting garment. You have so little room for error that if a seam lies over a point where uh, it can hit your rib or uh, mm -hmm. the point of the hip bone, then that can be so uncomfortable. And if just by shifting it a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, it can be a different experience and also the mm -hmm. shape of the course is so in important to get right as well so um, mm -hmm. the ones that you buy in a shop most of the time uh, and the ones that you order online from like mass produce uh, uh, that are mass produced in uh, mm -hmm. other countries uh, they're usually just tubes like a cylinder there's no shape to them they have right. like metal heating in them but they mm. have no real shape. So they compress your whole body. So everything is just kind of squished together and it mm. doesn't really give you a nice shape. And mm. uh, uh, by studying uh, corsets in uh, museums and mm -hmm. uh, uh, books, I kind of discovered that the shape of, uh, of the corset really defines how it fits as well. So mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of optical illusion going on with corsets as well, where mm -hmm. you kind of alter the proportions of a person. So you make them a little bit unnatural. And just mm -hmm. by changing small things and small sections of the body, uh, mm -hmm. it does something to your eyes. You know, it just it makes you think, of, oh, my God, that person has got an hourglass figure when they're mm -hmm. usually more a potato, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and uh, that doesn't mean that they're being um, like squished and in a in a horrible way. It's just that mm -hmm. you kind of sculpt the body and you also build out certain other uh, areas. So you mm -hmm. can use a bit of padding for the hip area or for mm -hmm. the bust, or and just by doing those kind of little things, you can change the way someone looks. Mm -hmm. What I find very interesting from what you said. Um, I find everything interesting so far, but one thing very particular was that you you emphasize how important seam placement is on, for corsets and that it massively affects the comfort of the corset. And so how would you say, I mean, this is a very, uh, this is actually a side question, but I'm just curious to know, what are your margins for seam placements or displacements within corset making i mean how 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 much can you offset a seam until it starts to become really uncomfortable uh there are no limits really in mm -hmm. in what you, i mean you can make a corset with very minimal boning 
I mean, the mm -hmm. only reason the, the boning really is in there is to keep the, the tension of the fabric uh, mm -hmm. vertical. Uh, so you, 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 like uh -huh. if you make a seam there mm -hmm. and you start to tighten it, it starts to compress and it mm -hmm. makes wrinkles in the waist area. Yeah. And uh, it's just tension marks. And you're trying to kind of eradicate that by uh, putting mm -hmm. in the boning. It just, and it needs to be in there quite securely, quite sturdily and like really sewn in. Uh, mm -hmm. So it has no uh, area to move about. Uh, mm -hmm. Because then you get those uh, tension lines again uh, and mm -hmm. the way you place your your uh, the lines the seams uh, it, like not behind every seam there needs to be a bone placement um, mm -hmm. there's for example a lot of Edwardian corsets where the um, the seams are not at all corresponding with the, the bone mm -hmm. <laughs> Fantastic. Like, that, yeah. like there's, um, there's not actually that many panels in here. There's mm -hmm. one here, there's a gusset here, uh, then there's um, one part here and a gusset as well. And then mm -hmm. there's the back the back area. Mm -hmm. But uh, the seams go uh, higgledy piggledy. Like here, there's a curved one, there's the gusset. But all the boning channels are just straight. Mm -hmm. Oh, Two I, at see, the time. I see. I see. Straight, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so that's one way of doing it. And then the outer um, seam um, proportions or placements can be anywhere you want because mm -hmm. they, they don't really uh, correspond with the boning channels. And right. but then you can also in like more than uh, like more modern corsetry, you see that uh, the the seams do become the channels as well for mm -hmm. the. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And then it, um, I like to like give or take, like uh, uh, make panels that are no more than an inch and a half wide mm -hmm. between bones. I see. It yeah. just creates a smoother overall mm -hmm. look. Uh, but um, yeah, you can you can widen that, or or you can just make like uh, really old-fashioned stays, uh, for instance. They were just mm -hmm. boned all over. It's just one thing mm -hmm. of boning. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Do you prefer narrower panels because it allows you to have more panels with less intake on each panel so that you're... Yes. Yeah. Right? I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so for instance, if you have like the two panels that would usually uh, shape the, the bust area, if mm -hmm. you just do two, then you mm -hmm. can just make... Uh, one curved uh, shape mm -hmm. uh, and you get kind of like a pointy cup um, and you get creases uh, underneath mm -hmm. the, the breast as well, which can be just not flattering. By mm -hmm. dividing those two panels up in four or mm -hmm. even more, you can really uh, create a, a, a round effect. And, mm -hmm. um, and a better so distribution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, and that's I, also the same for the hip. Um, the hip yeah. uh, sorry, <laughs> for the hip and the waist. Like the more you take in the waist, um, mm -hmm. and uh, the more you leave like the hip part alone of a corset. Uh, um, if there is a huge difference between waist and hip, uh, mm -hmm. if you only divide that difference in four panels, like all around, mm -hmm. then you, you get there's too much of a difference and you get a really strange shape um, that mm -hmm. only protrudes on one side. And if you divide that up more, then you can make it more gradual. And, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, I have experienced that as well. I mean, not with, with, not with corsets, but in general, suppression seems to be a lot more friendly when there is more of it, but then less in, in quantities of yeah. intake. Um, a question I have is nowadays in to, in today's era, let's say, apart from people who who do theater or or are specialized in making costumes or even people who do, uh, you know, dress up for parties and stuff. Who wears corsets? Who are the corset wearing clients these days, would you say? Um, uh, well, I have. 
clients from all walks of life, mm -hmm. uh, from all sorts of occasions, they wear them. Um, mm -hmm. And actually more than we might think sometimes. So okay. um, we tend to think that it's a very niche thing, but actually like the, the, the foundation of a, a bridal dress can also be a corset. It is sort of like a corset. Most of the I time see. it's more like a bustier. And there's a huge difference between like a proper corset and a, and a bustier, although some, yeah, you know, lines get faded sometimes, of course, between those yeah. two. But um, like uh, uh, um, when you have like a, a, a well-fitting wedding dress, like usually mm -hmm. the top part is also, they use some kind of boning or rigiline or something to keep the shape up um, mm -hmm. and uh, to not create those wrinkles in areas mm -hmm. where there might be compression. And a lot of uh, off the rack um, kind of wedding dresses are all about compression. I mean, I've had brides in tears in the, in my shop, that try, you know, just asking me, what can I do to make this not so painful to wear? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, um, yeah, just, um, the, yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah. You no, know, that's good to know because uh, what you're actually describing there is is beyond the immediate kind of because um, at least I don't I don't know much about corsets and when I think about people wearing corsets I actually try to imagine who would wear like an actual proper corset but as you're describing it 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 seems that you know the the concept of of corset can also be diffused into other types of garments that are as rigid as let's say bridal wear or other types of garments that that yeah, have yeah. the same yeah, kind so of structure yeah, yeah so mm -hmm. i've got uh, clients that wear it as evening wear when they go to a gala instead of mm -hmm. wearing like a, a, a sequined uh, dress um, mm -hmm. they want like a beautifully fitted corset made out of silk with mm -hmm. or without embroidery on it um, something that can become a conversation piece as well. Um, mm -hmm. And they wear it with a, a pair of really nice palazzo trousers or, or a beautiful skirt, you know, and it's, it can be an every, yeah, like a, um, yeah, just a fashionable option instead of mm -hmm. just having the dress, you know. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and I've also got uh, people that are really into uh, reenactment uh, and uh, like want something that is historically accurate. Um, yeah. Now I can do that, but it's not it's not completely where my passion lies. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I, it, it helps me immensely to know all the different uh, techniques from over the ages and mm -hmm. uh, to come up with also new ideas for myself mm -hmm. on how to construct a corset. Uh, I didn't ask you where where did you learn how to make corsets? How uh, where did you learn it? And and I want to do a follow up question so you can tell me that as well. What was mm -hmm. the process of learning corsets like? Like what is step one, step two, step three, and how does one develop the ability to make corsets? Um, well, how it started for me was by watching all those movies and thinking. I, I want to know what it feels like to wear one. I want to own one. Uh, yeah. And and then it naturally became a thing of, I want to also make them because mm. what I can find in a shop just is so limited. Like it, it either caters for the fetish industry, which is just a completely different thing altogether, or mm. it's um, uh, like a fashion top, but it doesn't do anything shape wise. It just, it just, it doesn't uh, sit well on the body. So yeah. there was just nothing that corresponded to what I had in mind, what I really wanted. And so I was at fashion school and I decided like, okay, at some point we're going to be learning how to do this. Mm -hmm. Like when, you know, like year one, making a, a blouse and we're making a skirt and we're making a waistcoat and uh, a pair of jeans and then second year making a dress and a coat and i'm like and when 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 are we going to make like any kind of foundational garments like mm -hmm. uh, and they're like oh no we're not doing that over here like that's just not being taught at all I was mm -hmm. like, but, but, 
okay, where do I start? I mean, this is in the time when there wasn't really internet or, you know, mm. or YouTube or anything. I didn't know anyone that was into the same thing as I was. I was certainly not wearing it. Uh, maybe mm. uh, admired it as well by watching it on TV or something, but never the, the desire to actually be able to make any. So uh, when I bought my first one uh, and decided that's not, that's definitely not how it should fit. I, uh, I unpicked half of it uh, with the idea that I could then trace the pattern pieces and alter uh, them where I thought I needed more room, more room mm. about, uh, around the hips, uh, more room around the actual rib cage, and then maybe slightly more compression on the waist, um, but uh, not anywhere else. And uh, so I started doing that and I made a lot of things that were just, you know, horrendous, uh, been worthy. And, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. you have to make a lot of monsters before you start making something that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it's just perseverance and making it and mm -hmm. not letting anything stop you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, well, just, um, I, I try to go to as many museums as I could uh, and just observing, like what you would do if you're into painting and you mm -hmm. get up close to, uh, mm -hmm. to a painting, and you see all the layers, all of a sudden you start seeing layers. It's mm -hmm. not a huge picture anymore. You mm -hmm. start to see what they've been doing, what they're trying to do. Like how mm -hmm. can you make something like a little blob look like a pearl from, mm -hmm. you know, two meters but like yeah. what happens after this? And that's what I did with corsets as well. I tried to get as close to the things as I could um, and, and just observe like what layers can I spot? Uh, what mm -hmm. stitching is used? Um, mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a lot of dodgy stitching around. <laughs> I always mm -hmm. thought that everything that was sewn by others is immaculate, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> I would go to these fashion um, exhibitions, uh, yeah. like when I, I lived in London for a little while, and I'd go to the Victoria and Albert Museum, and I'd be horrified mm. to see things up close made by these big houses, big names. Like, oh, my God, there's yeah. a safety pin. There's not mm -hmm. even a zip. Like, yeah. You know, but yeah. looking at the corsets, and especially the ones that are kind of degrading or, you know, like disintegrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Disintegrating. Great. Right? And disintegrating uh when when they're kind of rotting away you can see the layers it's like oh mm. ah so those channels you can make them part of the seam with your seam allowance or mm. they can just be separate channels all together and mm -hmm. like are they made out of twill uh like little strips of twill or are they made out of the same material as the rest of the course it is made out of what mm -hmm. are you know uh, are they all uh, steel boned or do they use other things? Like we hear about these whale bones, like were mm -hmm. they actual whale bones that they work? But like mm -hmm. what, why would you use that instead of the steel? And what difference does it make? And just experimenting and mm -hmm. making as many as I, as I could. And mm -hmm. then uh, when I moved to London, after I finished uh, uh, school here, I, I, I quickly escaped uh, to London because that seemed to me the place where I could mm. learn different things to that to what was on offer over here. Um, mm. So I would go to museums all the time just to have a, just to look and observe and uh, and try out. And there mm. were other corset wearers in London as well. There's a lot mm -hmm. of people that wear them, and so. Yeah, just being inspired also by others and, uh, yeah. Mm.